Hi, and welcome to Micro Moment Monday. And as you can see, Jim has been at it again. So, surprise me with roses when I came home from work the other day. What a guy. Today we're going to follow up on our kitchen gardens, microgreens, and our little herb garden. You may remember about three weeks ago that we used one of these 10 slot trays to plant 10 rows of microgreens. On day eight, we shot a little video as an update on that, and I can just tell you that it didn't work very well, but you're gonna see it for yourself. When we, oh, six, seven years ago, were thinking that we might want to grow microgreens professionally, we were really planning on using these to plant one type of seed in the whole flat, and then these 10 slot trays are a savings on soil. And so that was our plan. It was not our plan to grow 10 different types in one tray. But I did that to test seeds because those seeds are six and seven years old. And I learned a lot. We're going to insert a little clip right here that shows you the results after eight days. We're just gonna do a quick update on these microgreens. This is day eight and are they ever a mess? I usually do my first planting to check out the seeds and remember these are all seeds from 2014 so that makes them quite old and so I'm going to be throwing away some of these based on their performance here. On microgreens, don't think that this is normal. This was my entire harvest and my entire harvest should have almost filled this bowl. We replanted our microgreens and this time we did it in these little containers. Now these were the containers that the mushrooms came in. We did a video on dehydrating and freeze drying mushrooms. These were the mushroom containers and they are perfect for doing microgreens. And I just poked holes in the bottom and then put them in this flat. And this is what microgreens are supposed to look like. This is broccoli rob. This is also day eight, the same age as the other ones that you just looked at in that clip that we did a couple of weeks ago. So I'm still testing out seeds. It is obvious I need new microgreen seeds, but let me just give you a rundown. So this was the broccoli rob, and I'm gonna cut these. These are the beets, and they did much better in this little uh, container. It is so much easier to grow them this way these are radishes, but not the daikon radishes. These are the cherry bell radishes. And I really like radishes because their stems are thick. They have a tangy taste, and so there is more biomass in radishes. These are the peas. I just couldn't bring myself to throw those old pea seeds away. So I just think I'll keep growing them until I've exhausted. I probably have enough only for one more tray like this. But peas are such a delicious addition to microgreens and I do let peas get taller. I cut them when they're about as tall as these tall ones. This one is, um, this is a little mustard, Mizuna mustard. I did not grow this one in the other one and these are coming up just fine. So these seeds are still good. And this is basil not doing so hot. On day eight, they should be up about this tall. So these are struggling. I probably will not grow these anymore. So let's just cut these quickly and see what our harvest looks like. Again, I'm going way close to the bottom, to the soil. So I'm going to let the peas grow longer. I'm done with these. Now, uh, many people have asked, um, over the times that since the time we first started talking about microgreens, well, won't these regrow? And the answer is no, they won't. We have cut off the growing tip, and so what I will do with this is I will just dump this out in our compost pile, and then we'll start over with fresh potting soil when we get ready. The advantage to growing them in these individual pots like this are when I first started these, I was able to put the cover on, and then after three days, four of them were up and going, so I could remove them, put them over in our sunny window, and leave the other two in here in the dark for another couple of days. So that makes it very versatile. Now what I will do with these, isn't this such a pretty mix? The red beets just really make a, a delightful mixture there. Oh, this just looks fabulous. So I rinse these off 
let them dry completely, put them in plastic bags, and then we will be using these. So let's take a look now at our herb garden. Well, here they are. And I brought them over from our little table. The light is just terrible over there. You wouldn't be able to see a thing. Now, this we are now three weeks into this. And as you can see, some are doing a lot better than others. We're gonna start right up here. So this is marjoram. It took a long time to come up, but it's doing okay now. And um, this is the uh, lemon basil. All of the basils are doing great. This is chives, and these are a little bit spindly. The tops have dried out a little bit. I have plenty of chives outside, but I wanted to put some in my kitchen as well. This is French thyme, and it, I just only have very, very few that are coming up here. I planted them all about like these, but not everything germinated. And I, for my herbs, I always plant a lot of seeds, and then I will thin out. And on these, what I'm going to do is wait until they get almost this tall, and then I'm going to cut for our um, microgreens, add to our microgreens everything except what I'm going to leave, and I'll probably leave about two to three plants, the best ones in each one of these little pots. This is cinnamon basil, and again, it's a basil doing fine. This is the mystery herb. I named it one thing, and then everybody else was chiming in and saying, that doesn't, I can't remember what the tag said. I think I thought it was, I think the tag said some kind of basil, and somebody said, no, it isn't, it's this, or it's that, or the other. Well, right now it's dead. So what I have done is I have snipped some rosemary from our outdoor rosemary shrubs, and I am rooting this, and that is what is going to be going in this one just as soon as it develops some roots. This is oregano. It also took a long time to come up, but there's enough there that I'll be able to make some good selection. This again is basil. This is Italian basil. And this I'm really excited about. This is cilantro. And I've never grown cilantro before, so I'm really looking forward to that. This is Genovese basil. This probably came up thicker and better than anything else did. This one that is still in its little greenhouse is curly leaf parsley. It's been there now for almost three weeks. And still, I'm not seeing one seed has germinated. But its companion right here is Italian parsley. So at least we'll get some parsley. So that's it on our herb garden. In a few months, we'll bring you back and show you what this looks like when everything is all growing and producing. So the bottom line here is for us all to have kitchen gardens that will produce greens in times of a grid down situation so that we will have access to the benefits of fresh greens. So thanks for being with us and we'll see you at our next micro moment.